The next area of improvement for the Utah Jazz has to be their pick and roll game. We're talking about it coming up. Plus, are the New Orleans Pelicans a model of what a rebuild looks like? It's all next on Locked on Jazz. But um bum 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 pow. You are Locked On Jazz, your daily podcast on the Utah Jazz. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, I'm David Locke, radio voice of the Utah Jazz, Jazz NBA Insider. Today on Locked On Jazz, we'll dig into the Jazz pick and roll game, which still needs to improve greatly for the Utah Jazz as they continue to try to get better and better. Then... The next step along the way are the Utah, are the New Orleans Pelicans, a model for the Jazz rebuild. We'll look back to the 18-19 season when they were the ones who uh, traded Anthony Davis, what they got in that trade, how they used that, and where they are now. One, two, three, four, five seasons out from the Anthony Davis trade, similar to where the Jazz maybe were with Donovan Mitchell. They also traded Drew Holiday in that process, so a lot of parallels That we didn't do a Trends Monday, so we'll do a little bit of that today, get you ready for the game tonight as well. Uh, The uh, Sorry, my son is in the midst of having a foot surgery, and I'm getting a bunch of notes right. Of course, they all just came in right now. My wife just texted me to let me know, so I have to check that off. Um, So my wife just texted me, just left him. They wheeled him off. They should take one and a half foot for the surgery. So does that mean my son's coming out of surgery with half a foot left? Or did she? do you think she meant to write one and a half hours for the surgery? I'm hoping that that's what it meant and that it's not going to be. That's why I was stunned um, that um, um, that they're not taking um, a foot and a half from my son. That would that would be um, uh, uh, that would be much better. All right. Sorry. Um that that is that was that was kind of a real moment right there. Um, I am David Locke. If you don't know that, you're wondering why I'm such a scatterbrain because that's just who I am on the radio voice of the Utah Jazz and Jazz NBA Insider. And this is Locked On Jazz, your daily podcast on Locked On on the Utah Jazz, giving you insight, expertise, geeky numbers, and hopefully making it way better to be a jazz fan each and every day. Thank you so much for making Locked On Jazz your first listen. Every day we are free. We're available on all podcasting apps as well as YouTube. If you could take a second, follow or subscribe. It's always free. And if you're on YouTube, give this the thumbs up or the likes button. That would greatly help us out. And there's a little bell button right there that you can hit. And that will let you know every time we post an episode. Thank you very much uh, for doing so. Um, For those of you who are watching on YouTube, I've gone to this idea of doing a, a green screen kind of or background of the city we're in every night it does mean that my hand like disappears halfway through the broadcast sometimes um but it's better than looking at the back of my hotel room i've decided uh thank you very much uh, for tuning in today's show is brought to you by fanduel fanduel the official sports book of locked on make every moment more right now new customers get 150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a five dollar bet visit fanduel.com slash locked on to get started all right The next area improvement for the Utah Jazz is pick and roll. We are predominantly an off-ball team, okay? So we predominantly are going to run most of our actions off-ball, run Lowry off-balls, be creative in that sense. However, even when you are not a, by definition, pick and roll team, it is so much of the game in the NBA and so much of a staple that you actually still have to play it like we play some of the least amount of pick and roll in the nba because we're predominantly a spot up team everything else but but we're still running a massive amount of picks every day in fact 20 percent of our plays still end out of a pick and roll but that doesn't really tell the story because what really tells the story is when you suddenly start thinking about how many times you run a pick and roll that leads to leads to something else right so if we run a pick and roll and it leads to a spot up predominantly the number one thing in our offense is spot up. That's, that's what gets us the most of, of what we do. But if you look at a pick and roll team in the NBA, so the Chicago bulls run the most pick and rolls of any team in the NBA, they run 86 a game. That's followed by the Hornets who run 84 and Detroit to run 79. So not the best teams in the league anymore. We run the 29th ranked, 
amount of pick and rolls in the league. Only Denver runs fewer pick and rolls. And actually, if you look like the best teams no longer run a lot of pick and roll, the best, the bottom team in the league is Denver, who runs through Jokic, Utah, then we run off ball. Miami runs through Bam. Oklahoma City doesn't run a lot of pick and roll. They're just driving with Shea. Philadelphia doesn't run a lot of pick and roll They because of Embiid. Sacramento's running a handoff game. The Clippers, I guess, must run ISO. And New Orleans doesn't run a lot of pick and roll either. Um, so you, And the Warriors don't run a pick and roll. They run off ball. So the, the those are some of the best teams in the NBA. So the, it's, it's no longer a prerequisite to be a great pick and roll team. In fact, right now, I almost might argue that the correlation between the top teams in the league who run pick and roll and their quality is the reverse direction. However, even as we are not a heavy pick and roll team, we still run 57 of them a game. There's still, even when you're not a pick and roll team, it's still a huge percentage of what you do every night. And we're 26th in the league in pick and roll. Only Portland, Orlando, Memphis, Charlotte are worse. So that's the next step for us in our deve- in the development of this team is to start getting better pick and roll. And it's really a combined effort. Like So our guards aren't great at it. If you look at the top 73 guard, top guard, those guards have run 400 pick and rolls so far this year. 400. That's 73 guards. Here's where we rank. Colin ranks 30th out of 73, which isn't bad. So that's a good area for improvement for us. Clarkson ranks 53rd out of 73. Taylor ranks 63rd out of 73. And Keontae ranks 69th out of 73. Before you get too worried about the Keontae number there, it's obviously not ideal, but the worst guys in the league are almost all young. So Shaden Sharp is the worst in the league. Paula Boncaro, Jordan Poole, Killian Hayes, Keontae George, Mikel Bridges, Kyle Kuzma, Anthony Simon, Scoot Henderson, <coughs> Andrew Nebhardt, Taylor Horton Tucker, and then Terry Rozier, Malcolm Brogdon, Jalen Green are the guys that are on the bottom um, of the of of the list. The best, just so you have it, not surprised. Derek White's the best in the NBA right now with Tyrese Halbert and Jalen Brown, Jalen Williams, Dame Lillard, Jamal Murray, Steph Curry, Anthony Edwards, Devin Booker, Trey Young. Um, now. What's interesting is like you look at Derek White and Jalen Brown, you wouldn't really think of them as being the best pick and roll guards in the NBA, but the number one pick and roll big in the NBA right now is Chris Dapps Porzingis. And so when we start talking about pick and roll, it's a two way street. Part of the reason why those guys are so good is Chris Dapps Porzingis has developed into one of the most potent pick and roll guards in the NBA, or bigs in the NBA with his screen setting, but also with his popping. So they're like Rudy Gobert used to be the only guard in the end or big man in the NBA who had combinations of two guys in the top 10. The Jazz bigs, if you take, let's use 400 again as the number of picks set. So instead of having 73, we have 62 bigs who've done that. Lowry's quite good. That's because he's an off, similar to Przingis, he's an offensive force. When he flares out, you've got to go with him. It opens up things. Lowry's 19th in the NBA in pick and roll. So a little bit of an argument of like, can Lowry, can you play, can you run good pick and roll, get the switches with Lowry at the four or play Lowry at the five? Like it's a good discussion. John Collins is 34th in the NBA, so he's right in the middle. He's in the 45th percentile on pick and roll. A little bit better on direct, but on passes and things like that. And then Walker ranks 58th out of 62 in pick and roll. Evan Mobley, Goga Batazzi, DeAndre Ayton, and Precious Achua are lower. So the Jack, really, it's, it's a developmental game here for Walker. Keontae in in some of these younger players on how to play pick and roll. Paula Boncaro's in here again. It's pretty interesting. He's having such a great year. Everybody's so on board with him. He's like one of the least efficient players and bottom five in both pick and roll setting and ball handling, which is unique that he can do both, but it doesn't seem to be totally working out for him. Um, so this is where the Jazz, I think, actually, that's their next step of improvement is is being able to get a little bit better in the pick and roll game offensively you you can dig even another step deeper which is you start getting into combinations now this gets like i like it um 
I like kind of looking at this a little bit and adding the ball handler into it. And this is where you used to be able to see like Luka Doncic. It simply like didn't matter who he was with for the last few years. He was about as incredible as it gets. Um, and then when you looked at um, uh, Rudy Gobert, the same thing was true. So if we look at like Walker, he's run 119 picks with Keontae. They're 0.955. He's run 93 with Jordan. They're 0.95. And you dig into Walker's number where he's really Walker and Kalen was the combination that really, really struggled. They were 0.67. Walker and Colin are not super together. And then there's not much sample size after that. But if you, the sample size gets pretty small here when you start to play around with this, if you're going to kind of include mass groups, the, the, the best pick and roll combination in the league actually right now is Wendell Carter and Franz Wagner. If, if you do 80 picks, which is really low, it gets you to 254 combinations. It's like a ton, but it, it, it gets the, if you do a hundred, we actually can include kind of most of the jazz key lineups um, in there. And so out of the 200 players that have combinations, Walker and Keontae are 125th. That's not as bad as it is. It sounds for either of those two guys. So there's some real development there that can happen on both those guys to have for them um, to take place. Lowry and Colin Sexton rank 65th out of 200. Lowry and Jordan Clarkson rank 146th out of 200. And Lowry and Keontae George rank 164th. So Lowry and Colin beginning to find a little bit of a mix. John Collins and Jordan Clarkson actually have a nice little combination going um, in about 98 picks uh, or 130 picks. They're 22nd in the league. So they're actually our best combination um, of any of any of our groupings. Uh, jo Jordan and or John and Colin are kind of middle of the pack. John and Keontae don't have a vibe at all yet. They're 191st out of 198. Um, so you just a little bit of these learning combinations. Um, I think the good news here is that Kessler's number where I had Walker 58 out of 62 and kind of alarmingly like he and Keontae are OK together. They're kind of a little bit below middle of the pack, but certainly need to develop. Walker was not um, not as good with Talon um, or any of the other guys. And then your other two bigs, John Collins and Jordan Clarkson, two veterans kind of have it figured out a little bit. Uh, John Collins. And Colin Sexton have been average. And then John Collins and Keontae really scuffling. Lowry, who we talked about as our best pick and roll combination, that is largely because of his combination with Colin Sexton, which is 65th in the league. And again, Keontae hasn't quite figured out how to play with that kind of spacing big yet. He's at 164th out of uh, the 198. So there's just some real development here, opportunities for the next stage for the Utah Jazz in regards to pick and roll. And I think that's the next area where this team improves offensively. Where this the Jazz are are so much better than they once were, but some of the three point shooting is slipping again. I think the Jazz are now back down to um 26 in the league in three point shooting percentage. Some of the offensive numbers are beginning to slip a little bit um from where they were uh before. And that I think is this is where these things get rectified. And as teams just continue to pound Lowry and not let him get the off ball game and find those opportunities. I think uh, we see that the offense has been, you know, pretty nails the Houston game. It wasn't as good. The Boston game it wasn't as good. We're seeing the jazz play the better off when they're seeing the better defensive teams. This is where I feel like the pick and roll um, deficiencies that this, the youth of this team and the combination of players this team is having right now. So we'll continue to keep an eye on that. Um, are the New Orleans Pelicans a model for the Utah Jazz and the rebuild, or at least something for us to look at to understand what we're still embarking upon as we try to build this thing back up? That's as we continue. We're just getting started on today's edition of Locked on Jazz. Today's show is brought to you by Murdoch Hunt, uh, Chevy, located in Woods Cross and also in Logan. The Murdochs have been in Utah for over 80 years, giving you the no regrets treatment to make sure that you have everything you need as a buyer in the car world. And Chevy is Americana. Chevy trucks, there's nothing quite like the Silverado and the Colorado with its uh, unique form, way it's built, Chevy uh, owns the market for a reason. It is the Chevy Americana that is part of the Murdoch lineup with the Silverado, the big 
uh, truck. The Colorado's the smaller, zippier one, so make sure you check them both out. Over at Murdoch Hyundai, and the SUV lineup starts with the Tahoe and the Suburban, which we know so well, and then the new Blazers have changed the entire lineup of the SUVs over at Murdoch Chevy. If you're going to get in the market for a car and you're heading over to Murdoch Chevy, please email me first at dlock09 at gmail.com so we can take care of you and give you the locked on VIP treatment that the everydayers of Locked On deserve each and every day. We'll make sure uh, we take care of you and give you uh, that treatment uh, that makes what is being a Locked On every day or worth it. Thank you very much for supporting our patrons. And if you're heading over to Murdoch Chevy, be, please make sure you take a second uh, to get us uh, the information so that we can make sure that we take care of you. Today's show is also brought to you by FanDuel, <coughs> the official sports book of Locked On and your partner for all of your betting fun over at FanDuel. Here's the deal. New customers on FanDuel, you get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $150 in bonus bets, win or lose. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to make your first bet a layup. FanDuel is an official sportsbook partner of The NFL, the big NFL games are all coming. NBA tonight, Jazz are in New Orleans. I'm sure we're a dog tonight. How much? Six and a half for the Pelicans. Over-under is at 239. Clippers and Lakers tonight in L.A. Clippers are a nine-point favorite. I think I might have heard LeBron's out. Um, I'll have to check that. Uh, NFL games this weekend, by the way, the Chiefs are a Three and a half point dog in Baltimore, and the Niners are a seven point favorite over the Lions. That is FanDuel one hundred and fifty dollars in bonus bets after you make your first bet. Go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Thank you so much for making locked on jazz your first listen of the day. Thank you all the everydayers out there. Join us each and every day. All right. In 19, in, in 2018, the New Orleans Pelicans, by the way, Jazz Pelicans tonight here in New Orleans, game available for you on Sirius XM. All NBA broadcasts get the hometown feed on Sirius XM. Uh, all right. In 18, 19, they, the, the Pelicans trade Anthony Davis and they get Brandon Ingram, Lonzo Ball, and Josh Hart in the deal. So they get three players. Um, as well as some picks, and then they proceed to also win the lottery. So that is a way to accelerate a rebuild. I'm not sure that that's quite the same thing. That the This is where the model is not quite the same, but frankly, um, <clears throat> to, uh, you know, ha- Zion is incredible, but it's also um, been a little bit of kind of a, uh, you know, a miss. I mean, it, it's been a bag of of whatever. It's been it's been difficult. So, in night, so the first year in nineteen ninety twenty, they go thirty two and forty. It's coming out of that's coming out of COVID. They have Ingram, they have Ball, and they have Hart. And then in November of twenty twenty, after that first year, they make their second trade. They trade Drew Holiday. And they get a 2024 pick swap with Milwaukee, which they probably will not exercise this year. A 2025 first round pick, which is Milwaukee's, which will be a late 20s. A 2026 pick swap, which maybe they'll exercise by then. And a 2027 first round pick down the road pretty far. And they then hire uh, Stan Van Gundy as their head coach. They trade for Steven Adams. They make some deals. In the 2020 draft, they drafted Kyra Lewis. And in 2021, and, and so the 2020 season, after they go, they end up going 32 and 40 in the in the 19 2021 season. Then in 2021, under under uh Stan Van Gundy, they they make kind of their next uh step, but at the end of the year, they actually get they fire Stan Van Gundy. He actually lasts just a year as their head coach. So after their first year of the rebuild, when they go 32 and 40 in the 
or 30 and 42, excuse me. They then go 31 and 41. So they get one game better, um, 72 game schedule again. Um, I guess that first year is the uh, pre bubble year of COVID. This was the full, this was the COVID year. We played 72 games. So, and then they traded at the end of that year in tw- November of 2020. That's when they make the trade of Drew Holiday. So they go through the year with Drew Holiday at 31 41 with Stan Van Gundy, and then they, they fire Stan Van Gundy at the end of the first year. And they go into the 21 22 season and they go 36 and 48. So their first year, they go 30 and 42. They've won the lottery. They draft out of that the 13th pick, Kyra Lewis. He doesn't pan out. Hope that's not Keontae. 2021. They go 31 and 41. They draft Trey Murphy, the third, who's been really good until like last week, and Herb Jones, who's been terrific. They In November of 22, they tr- trade Drew Holiday. They also lose Lonzo Ball in the offseason for nothing. And then in February of 2022, in the midst of their next season, they trade for C.J. McCollum. So they trade Josh Hart. They trade a first-round pick that actually doesn't convey and maybe becomes a 2026 point. So here's what's interesting about that. Out of the Anthony Davis trade, they win the lottery, pretty great. Get Brandon Ingram, pretty great. Lose Lonzo Ball for nothing. And Josh Hart leads them to C.J. McCollum. That's a pretty awesome pull for Anthony Davis if you're going to do a rebuild, similar to the way the Jazz for Donovan Mitchell right now have Lowry, Mark, and Colin Sexton, and they have picks coming. We'll see what they do with it. And frankly, use some of the play in the Minnesota. We have Walker Kessler and we use Malik Beasley and Jared Vanderbilt and some of those players to go get a future first round pick from the Lakers. So we'll see, you know, the Jazz still has to plan out. And, you know, what's actually we're seeing here is on the Drew Holiday. The picks aren't panning out nearly as well over time, which is often the case. So the Pelicans year one, they go 30 and 42. Year two, they go 31 and 41. Year three, they go 36 and 46. Last year, they finally get over 500. They have C.J. McCollum. They've put their chips in a little bit to get C.J. McCollum, and they didn't really have to give up many of their chips. Like, they they didn't give up any of their, their Milwaukee assets. They didn't give up much of anything else, and they end up not conveying the 2022 pick. They end up using that in the eighth pick of the draft for Dyson Daniels. So, so with Dyson Daniels, we'll see again on the on the eighth pick. What's similar here about New Orleans to where the Jazz are is they're picking in the middle of the pack. And that's what we seem to be on our way. You know, we had nine from um, and 16. They had 13 in Kyra Lewis, 17 in Trey Murphy, the third, eight in Dyson Daniels. And they took 14 with Jordan Hawkins last year after going 42 and 40. They're not. They got Zion in the previous lottery. They have they're now picking in the middle of the pack, which feels like where we're heading to doing or this year, actually not having our pick if we make the play in. Um and we'll see whether those pan out. None of those guys feel like they're going to be anything other than rotation players in the NBA. Jordan Hawkins has had some nice games. Dyson Daniels, it's really unclear. Herb Jones is good, but a lot of trade rumors around him right now, because whether he fits or not, Trey Murphy's been very good until, as I said, the last month, a nice rotation player. So what they, the, the, what I think is interesting here, I'm like, well, what can we take from the Pelicans? Is it a good model? Obviously, they. the first thing it's similar is in trading Donovan, we got Lowry and Colin, and in trading and Anthony Davis, they ended up with Brandon Ingram, Lonzo Ball, Josh Hart, and actually the pick that I think becomes Zion Williamson, if I have it right. And that, um, it seems like that timing's off on that, but I'll have to check that. Uh, but they do win the lottery and have end up with Zion here early in this process. Um, the They end up not, Ball turns out to get them nothing. Hart gets them C.J. McCollum. That, so really, Ingram, C.J. McCollum out of that trade, plus the lottery pick. Like, whoo, that's pretty great. Can the Jazz, what's the next step? Can the Jazz take Lowry Markin, who's our Brandon Ingram, Colin Sexton, either as he is, becomes our C.J. McCollum, or we Colin eventually gets moved to add a C.J. McCollum type, and then do we use some of those picks from Cleveland to add and do it a little bit more? Same thing on Minnesota. You know, how does that parlay over time? We used, really, Minnesota at this point is Walker, Kessler, and then the picks plus the Laker pick is kind of what the Minnesota trade yielded us. They used Drew. So theirs is very much like Drew. Like our Rudy Gobert trade is very much like their Drew holiday trade, where they have the 2024 pick swap, 2025 fifth, 2026 first, 
pick swap 2027 first out of Milwaukee. We'll see what what parlays out of that. The other thing, though, is just the time, right? They, they did everything pretty well here. 30 wins, 31, 36, 42. And now this year's the first year they're really legitimately above 500, top six in the Western Conference. Five years into this is the first time that their differentials well plus over that they're that they're a top six team that they may not have to play in a play in. I mean, that's five years in. Now, some of that has to do with Zion's health may have slowed them down a little bit, but it's interesting to kind of look at that, that that's what it's taken and that that might be really what the telling model is here. Also, just kind of the crapshoot of the draft. Like they've done pretty well. Kyra Lewis didn't pan out and just got moved. Trey Murphy, I think is a really good player. And at 17 is a really solid pick. Hopefully that's our version of Keontae. Dyson Daniels at eight, Jordan Hawkins at 14, Herb Jones at 35. They've That's four straight picks. I think you're going to turn out all right. Dyson Daniels has not shot it great. Um, so there's a little hesitation still there on Dyson Daniels in his second year in the NBA. Daniels is shooting 43% for the field and 28% from three. And if you're going to be a guard, you better shoot better than 28% from three. So I think there's a little hesitation there on him. Um, but you're seeing kind of this materialized and you're seeing after five years that they finally are at that spot. All right, uh, we'll take a look at trends Monday on Tuesday as we continue here on Locked on Jazz. Today's show is brought to you by Prize Picks. It's your daily fantasy fun. Prize Picks. There's really, a, no, like, eh, there might be, I don't was going to say there's no more enjoyable way to watch a game. Like, you know what? You could be with friends and family. All right. So it's a super enjoyable way to be involved in a game with your daily fantasy sports, largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. Why? Because you pick more or less on two to six players in their stat protections, and you're not going up against pros or sharks or things like that. That's why it's so great. You can combo the NFL and the NBA if you want to do that. They've got the reboot policy. So in case somebody gets hurt, you're testing your skills in the most exciting way in daily fantasy sports. And frankly, you can turn $10 into 250 if you get super hot. Prize picks is really simple to play. You make your pick, submit, entry in less than 60 seconds, quick withdrawals, easy gameplay. Enormous selection of players and types, plus Taco Tuesday is today. Prize picks, discount, select projections up to 25% to provide even more value. So take advantage of Taco Tuesday. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA. Use the code locked on NBA. For your first deposit match up to $100, that's prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA. Your first deposit match up to $100, lowercase, locked on NBA. Thanks so much for making Locked on Jazz your first listen of the day. If you watched Shoot Your Shot with Will Hardy on Jazz Plus, great fun, great fun with the head coach. So make sure you check it out, get that and other great content on jazz plus. All right, jazz uh, come into this one 10th in the Western conference. Rockets are game behind us at 11th after their victory in that bloodbath of a game. Both teams are well rested tonight. All right, let's take a look at um, some of the trends. Uh, we like to look at the two. We do this usually on Mondays, but I didn't get to it yesterday. We had a jam packed show. It happens. Uh, so let's look at the last two weeks or last 10 games is the way I like to look at it. And then we'll look at this. Um, so last 10 games, and then we'll look at the um, last two weeks. So the Pelicans have the number two offense in the NBA over the last two weeks. The Jazz have the number three. These are two of the hottest offensive teams in the NBA over the last 10 games. So maybe our pick and roll is not that big an issue. I do think eventually it is. Our pace of play is way up. We're playing the fastest pace of any team in the league over the last 10 games. Um, I don't, it's a really interesting stat. I'm really surprised by it. So I'll have to ask Will Hardy about it. Um, but so over the last 10 games, our offense is the third best in the NBA. The Clippers is one. Pelicans is two. Jazz is three. Thunder is four. Nuggets five, all Western Conference teams, interestingly. Cleveland six, Milwaukee seven, Phoenix eight, Golden State nine, and Sacramento ten. You know what's interesting about that is we're all facing Eastern Conference teams, generally, not totally. I understand we've played th th four straight against West, but there's a lot of interconference stuff going on to see the West explode like that. Teams that can't score right now are Portland, Atlanta, interesting, Charlotte, Miami, Houston, and Orlando, those are the bottom five. Defensively, the best teams in the NBA are the Knicks, Cavaliers, Minnesota, Miami, and Boston, with Chicago a distant drop at sixth. 
teams that are not defending are the Golden State Warriors. They didn't have Draymond. Detroit, Portland, Toronto, Milwaukee, and Washington. So Milwaukee at 26 is certainly interesting. Toronto with a reshaped roster at 27th is really interesting. The Earth Trends Monday is much more interesting than usual. Jazz third best offensive team, Pelicans second best offensive team in the last 10 games. Hottest teams in the NBA, the Cavaliers, Donovan and Jared Allen are basically doing Donovan and Rudy things. Knicks are number two. Clippers are number three. By the way, for those of you who are longtime Jazz fans, I was walking down the street this morning. We ran into Walt Perrin, uh, who's now scouting with the Knicks. He was outside hotel. We just sat and chatted for a little while. Wonderful surprise. One of my most favorite people. Um, Cavaliers, Knicks, Clippers, Pelicans are the fourth hottest team in the NBA, despite being six and four. Thunder, Minnesota, Boston, and the Jazz are the eighth best differential teams that are really scuffling. Portland, Charlotte, Atlanta, Houston, Washington, Detroit, and Golden State. Let's look at the shorter realm of things right now. This is kind of the last two weeks. Some of these trends will be similar. Some of these will be different. So in the more immediate, the hottest team in the league is still Cleveland. Followed by New York, Phoenix, Oklahoma City, and Utah. Fifth hottest team in the NBA over the last two weeks. Teams are struggling the most. Portland, Charlotte, Dallas. That's interesting. Wasn't in there before. Golden State and Atlanta. Offensively, the hottest team in the NBA is the Clippers. Followed by the Jazz. Milwaukee. So maybe the pick and roll is just not that big a deal. Uh, Maybe I was totally wrong. But it feels like to me the other night, like we just couldn't get that going when they took Lowry away. Um Clippers, Utah, Milwaukee, Phoenix, New Orleans. So two of the hottest offensive teams in the NBA again facing tonight. Teams that can't score right now are Portland, Miami, Atlanta, Charlotte, Orlando, and Houston. On the defensive end, the best team in the NBA right now is Cleveland by a long shot. Eight points better than anyone else. New York, Minnesota, Oklahoma City, and Brooklyn. And on the defensive end, Golden State, Portland, Dallas, Detroit, Charlotte, and New Orleans not defending. All right, that is your edition of Locked on Jazz today. Maybe the pick and roll is not that big a deal. Our offense is perfect. We'll see. Offense is rolling a little bit. Pace of play is really interesting. I'm going to ask Will about that um, and what's driving that and how. um, That's a funky number. Um, So I'll have to find out a little bit. That is Locked on Jazz today. Hope you're doing great. Make sure you grab all the great contact on Jazz Plus, including Holly Rose sitting down with Frank Layton, Ryan Smith, Will Hardy, and others in her Jazz Plus. Jazz tonight, 6 p.m. start, KSL Sports Zone as well as Utah Jazz app, KSL app, NBA app, and Sirius XM. Thanks so much for tuning in to Locked on Jazz today. You're the best. We will now send you the first ever 24-7 stream on YouTube, the national sports stream, Locked on Sports Today.